Hi, it's me, Streaky. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm talking about my five top tips if I was advising somebody at a home studio, what do you want to do? What is the kind of general rule of thumb for mastering your own mix or mastering in general? What are the five best tips I could give someone? Well, tip number one would be don't use a compressor. Now, compressors are great, don't get me wrong, they're brilliant, they glue the mix together, you can get some warmth out of them, you can get different sound out of them, but as a general rule of thumb, by the times you're getting to having a mix, a mix is quite compressed. So by then running into another compressor, you're pulling it down, and really you wanna save that tightness for when you're limiting at the end, because that's gonna give you your level and that's gonna tighten the, sound, the track right up when you put it through a limiter anyway. So tightening it up with a compressor can get dangerous. I'm not saying don't use one. I use them for sort of going through, getting the warmth, but as a kind of general rule, try not to use compressor, try to use EQ and a limiter. Right, tip number two, going on to limiters. Tip number two is only limit in the box. Now, what I mean by in the box, if you don't understand that, is within the computer, within your door, within your software, within Pro Tools, whatever you're using, Logic. Don't, if you're using hardware and you're going out of your computer into a load of hardware and then you limit there, you've got to go into a A to D, an analog to digital converter, which will then go into your computer again, and then you've got to limit again. So what you're doing is what I said in tip one, you're gonna pull down the level and sort of take off the peaks and hold it back, where it, you're gonna get a much more open sound and a much more louder sound if you are out of the box, not limiting, and then saving the limiting for within your door at the end. So if you're not going out of the box, forget this tip, but if you are going out of the box and you're using hardware, then this is a great tip. Don't use a limiter because it's just compressing the sound a bit more. So anyway, tip number three. Now, this tip is something that I personally do all the time and I think is a really good rule, is I add EQ, I don't take away EQ. Now, I do take away EQ, so I'm completely lying but I'm, these are just my kind of general tips for not getting it wrong if you're fresh to this. So when you're adding EQ and you're adding, say, the bottom top, whichever way it is, then ooh, works, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, when you're adding some top and uh, some bottom, this bit here in the middle is a kind of subtraction in a way. So instead of pulling that down, it's nice to add a bit of flavor of the EQ and then you can decide where that flavor is. And because you're using wider curves with mastering and you're not doing like really spiky EQs up, you get a smoother sound, it sounds more open and then you're not taking away. When you take away, then it's taking away from the sound and you're gonna strip frequencies. There is a video I did on this said it in a lot more detail, it's either there or there, wherever the card appears. So go and watch that. That'll describe this in a lot more detail than I'm gonna do here, because that is tip number three. Now what is tip number four? Four. With EQ, don't ever add more than two dB at any frequency point. Now most professional mastering guys are adding half a dB, 0.3 of a dB, maybe one dB. If it's mentally crazy, they'll add two. Uh, some people, if your mix is completely shocking, will add three, but three doesn't sound like much when you're mixing or recording, but in the mastering world, it's a nightmare. So you don't add three at any one point, just don't add over two, and try and add half dBs and try and hear what difference that's making, because that's kind of tuning your ears. The main reason for this is, by the time you get to mastering, you're dealing with a lot smaller sort of frequency range, and you can really hear the difference at 0.5 dB or 1 dB. And just trust me, you're add if you're adding more than two, you'll probably need to add in other areas, sort of two here, maybe one there and half there, but try not to EQ too much. Try and do just one EQ setting, see how it sounds, don't add too much. But if you're adding over two, that's a red flag for me. On to tip number five. Always like my video. No, that's not it. Uh, but yeah, like the video if you like it, thanks. Sorry, tip number five really is 
if you haven't got an amazing A to D converter, so that's an analog to digital converter that I was explaining earlier with the limiting tip, don't go out the box. Stay in the box because software in the box is going to sound much better than what you're going to gain from going out thinking you're going to add loads of analog flavor and vibe. If you've got a bad A to D, you're going to be really not doing the music any favors. You're kind of degrading the signal probably and then you might not have very good leads. They might be long. You might be adding some noise. Your um, outboard equipment, unless you've got really expensive, lovely outboard equipment, you're really not going to be getting a lot more but well, you're not going to get any more than you would from using some decent high quality plugins. So my top tip there is unless you've got good gear and good ears, don't go out of the box, stay in the box. Um, and if you haven't got a good A to D, definitely don't go out of the box and a good D to A as well, because you've got to go out nicely and come back in nicely and make sure that while you're out, it's all nice and clean. So just stay in the box. You'll get a great result anyway. So that is my number five tip. So I hope you like these top five. If you've got any really nice little tips, put them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do, and I'll see you in the next video.